I finally found it. It's this copy of Vector Analysis by H.B. Phillips. This is a book written by a math professor who worked at MIT. And he was actually the boss of the math professors. So after he worked there for a while, he became the math boss. He's the MIT math boss. I have all of his books. Anyways, in this video, I didn't want to so much talk about that. I wanted to talk about just learning. And so you see here, I have a bunch of books. I've got a book here called Bees and People. I've got an old calculus book here with an awesome cover. And over here we have lasers and their prospects. And here we have vector analysis by the MIT math boss. So all of these books are very different and they're for different audiences, but they all have one thing in common. And that's really the point I want to make in this video. It's that it's about learning. And I understand because I'm like this too. Most people, when they go to school, they're going because there's another goal, right? You're going because you're trying to maybe better your life, right? Maybe you're trying to get a degree so you can get a job, whatever your reason, a lot of times it's simply not to learn. And I think it's important to remember that learning for the sake of learning is really beneficial and it doesn't have to be math, right? It can be about lasers or it can be something completely different and random like bees and people. Or maybe it will be math and it's something like calculus or vector analysis. So it's about learning. The most common thing people say, and I've said this too, is what's the point of learning topic XYZ? Why do I need to learn this? And the question is that honestly, only each person can answer that, right? You as an individual can answer that question. Maybe you want to learn it because you know, simply you're interested in it. For example, I have a strong interest in farm animals. I do, I like farm animals. I think they're interesting. So it's something I care about. And so that's something that I'm interested in reading. So I think that different people have different interests. This book here is really cool. Maybe we should just take a quick look at it so we can see what's inside it and we can talk about it because this book in particular is a good calculus book. I have used this as a reference for examples and I think it's pretty good. Calculus with Analytic Geometry by Robert Ellis and Denny Gullick. This is an older book. I believe it's from the 70s. Yeah, wow, 1978. Let's take a look at the contents of this book. And it's very similar to the contents of modern books, but it has different explanations. Functions, limits and continuity. So this is all Calc 1 stuff you would see if you took a calculus class. Derivatives. Applications of the derivative, the integral, and then techniques of integration. So all of this content here you would see if you took a Calculus I course in college today, even though this book was written in 1978. And to me, that is something really cool about math. You can pick up an old book on math like this and you can learn knowledge and the knowledge you learn is still applicable today. It's still true today, which I think makes it really incredible. Seven is on applications of the integral, eight is on inverse functions, nine is on sequences in series, and 10 is on conic sections. So these are things that you would see in a Calculus two course. Here we get into like Calculus three material, vectors, lines, and planes, vector valued functions, partial derivatives, multiple integrals. And it's cool because it goes even further. It goes into the calculus of vector fields, which is a topic that's often omitted if you take Calc 3 because it just happens at the very end. So sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. It does have answers to the selected exercises as well, which makes it awesome. It looks like there are answers to most of the odd numbered problems, but not all, which is pretty good for a calculus book. Most calculus books have that same situation. You'll get answers to the odd numbered problems, but there's usually a few missing. Here they talk about Stokes' theorem and the book does give good examples of applying Stokes' theorem and it shows all of the work and it shows all of the steps. So that's one of the nice things about having so many math books. You know, if you're trying to learn a specific thing and maybe the example in your book is not very good, you can refer to another book and you can learn from that. It does have a lot of exercises also. Some of them are very easy and then some of them are a little bit more challenging. So it's got a good mix, just like most modern books do. So it's very similar to one of the modern calculus books that you could get today. 
but it's an older one. Yeah, it's Calculus, and it's by Robert Ellis and Denny Gullick. Let's take a look at this other book I have here. This is the one by the MIT math boss, Vector Analysis by H.B. Phillips. Let's open it up, take a look inside. This person here has their PhD. Vector Analysis by H.P. Phillips, PhD, Professor of Mathematics, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And here's the other books by H.P. Phillips. Vector Analysis, Calculus, Differential Equations, and Analytic Geometry. It is the object of this book to present vector analysis in the form that is required for work in theoretical electricity and hydrodynamics. For these subjects, what is needed is the analysis of vector fields and the study of the quantities which characterize each type of field. These quantities have essentially the same form and properties in whatever field they occur. The discussion of such matters in a separate course, rather than their gradual introduction in connection with one of the typical fields, has the advantage of showing which results follow merely from mathematics and which are dependent on physical hypotheses. In broad outline, the book consists of two parts. The first five chapters cover the fundamental operations and the more general properties of scalar and vector fields. The remaining chapters contain the detailed analysis of fields, the properties of potentials, and linear vector functions. In an elementary course, the work might be restricted to mainly to the first five chapters, together with selected topics from the others. The author is indebted to Charlotte T. Perry for assistance in the entire preparation of the manuscript and revision of the proof. H.B. Phillips, the MIT math boss, Cambridge, February 1933. I'm sorry, I just got to smell it. I just got to give it a whiff. Oh, that is amazing. This is super interesting. In the reprinting of this book, the recommendations of the War Production Board have been observed for the conservation of paper and other important war materials. The content remains complete and unabridged. And it has like an eagle. It says, books are weapons in the war of ideas. Wow. Wow, what does that mean? That's really, it's really interesting, right? These old books have a lot of like... Just a lot of history, and that really, really makes them like extra cool. Here are the contents. It starts with elementary operations, and then it goes on to partial differentiation, and then integration. There's Stokes theorem, which we saw earlier. General coordinates, irrotational and solenoidal vectors, electrostatic fields. Wow, harmonic functions. Scalar and vector potentials. This has a lot of mathematics that maybe you've never seen. Turn the page here. The pages are thick. This is, this is nice quality. Yeah, wow. Linear vector functions. All kinds of topics. Vector analysis. Elementary operations. Definitions. The quantity of physics can be divided into two classes. Namely, those having magnitude only and those having magnitude and direction. Yeah, very nice. This book does have exercises, but unfortunately it does not have solutions or answers. A lot of the other books by H.P. Phillips have answers to all of the problems, which is really incredible, but this one is lacking the solutions. I don't know if this book is in uh, what's called the public domain. I don't know. I don't know when, um, you know, how that works. But I know that a lot of older books are in the public domain. A lot of the other books by H.P. Phillips are free. And if I remember, I will do my best to try to leave links to those books in the description, as well as links to these other books if I can find them. But his books, a lot of his other books are free, and they have answers to all of the problems, which is absolutely incredible. Makes it great as a tool for self-study. I bought this book because I collect math books, and I like looking at random math books sometimes. I think... Learning is important, and I really think that's what this video was about. It's about learning, so if you take away anything from this video, just remember that learning is important, and I think learning is good for you. I don't know. Should you learn math? I think so, but that's because I like math. But maybe you like something else, right? Maybe you're interested in bees and people, or maybe you're interested in lasers, or something else. Anyways, I just wanted to make this short video. I hope everyone has an awesome, awesome time. Good luck and take care.